working with buyers on HUD listings. A little bit of background, Caleb is a HUD listing agent. He has been uh, since 2012. And for the past five years, I have taken over that portion of working with agents um, and, and the listings for him. So we're gonna go over like some tips for you to know when you, are, when you do have a buyer interested in buying a HUD home. First step, get yourself registered. Really, really big deal. You can register at any time. You just go out to the HUD home store, have your license number handy. And up on the screen there, I have um, your NAID number that for your market center. Um, you will need your license number and that number and get yourself registered. Even if you don't currently have a buyer interested in a HUD home, because right now there's not a lot of inventory there, um, it's a good idea to get yourself out there so that you're prepared. Uh, so otherwise you'll be in a panic trying to get yourself registered and get a bid in before it expires. Super easy. It only should take you about five, 10 minutes. Okay. When you're entering a bid, um, HUD properties are all off a bidding system. So you, you got to watch, you watch the, they're going to be on the HUD home store. So you're going to see them in your MLS, but the instructions are going to say, go to the HUD home store. Uh, so that you can see uh, all the details about the property. They'll, they'll have it in MLS, but you're not going to be able to put in an offer just simply by um, going out there and doing your normal steps. So you're going to want to go out to the HUD home store to submit bids. When you get out there and you select the property that your buyer wants to look at, you're going to see a couple of things. Um, you're going to see what your bidding period is. So you want to know that uh, it's a lot of times they have 10 days, sometimes 15. If it doesn't get accepted, they'll open it up for 30. And usually this first bidding period is only going to be open to um, owner occupants. Okay, so they're not going to let investors go in and buy everything up. There are a few exceptions um, if the home just is completely unlivable occasionally. They'll do that or they'll open it to um, like fire departments, that kind of thing for a city to, to upgrade it or just tear it down. But that's pretty rare. It's almost always owner occupant for at least 10 days. So you wanna make sure that one, that your buyer is, is not an investor intending to flip um, because they had will, issue fines and come back at you for that if they find out that you have somebody that's trying to buy it and flip it um, and not live in it. They do make them sign something. It does say that they could go to prison and have a $250,000 fine. So that's something you really want to make sure that they're being honest with you. Um, another thing that you're going to want to watch for, HUD does do inspections, which is um, something that a lot of foreclosures do not. So when you're looking, you're gonna to wanna to look at all the tabs on that property when you're out there and you're gonna to go to the addendums tab and you're gonna, it's something called a PCR. This will show you what their inspection showed. So if there's broken pipes, um, different things like that, it'll say it failed a pressure test. So that's important for your buyers too because then they know going in, okay, we're gonna have some plumbing issues. Um, and they also know that you know not all financing is going to work for these homes, especially if, if that's the situation where there's pipes broken, electrical problems. Um, they're probably going to have to go in with a, as a cash buyer. These homes are you can't negotiate. You can put in any bid that you choose, um, but you there you cannot negotiate on terms. So if you um, want. A cash closing, it's going to be 30 days. There's no no changing that. Finance closings, 45 days. Um, closing costs, you can enter closing costs. However, that will subtract from your bid. So if you put in a bid for 140000 and you put in $3,000 in closing costs, your bid really is $137,000. Um, and that's how HUD looks at it. It's because they take that money and then, you know, that's going really going towards um, the title fees and things like that. So 
And that's another thing, they don't pay for that. They will make sure that taxes are paid and that kind of stuff, but you, your buyers do pay for the title work. Also note, um, you guys don't have to worry about it in your area as far as I know, but if it's a brokerage that lists your immediate family in that broker in order to just um, buy those homes. HUD has their own contracts. So you win the bid, great. They're gonna send you instructions. They're gonna say you've won the bid. You now have 48 hours to do these things. Um, so first thing you want to do, and even before you show your buyer a home, um, make sure they have, they've talked to a lender, they, the lender is aware that they are looking at foreclosed homes and that they have a pre-approval letter, um, because you're going to need quickly, you're going to have to give them a call. Very first thing, say, Hey, we won the bid. I'm going to need a copy of, um, that letter. And you're also going to need them to go get an earnest money check. The earnest money checks have to be cashier's check or money order. And they have, and then they have to get it into you. They're either going to be for 500 or 4,000, depending on the price of the property. And then they've got to get you that check. You've got to get over to that listing broker office. There's a specific receipt that needs to be filled out by the listing broker. And they're going to give you a copy of that check with the receipt that you need to upload. Um, next step, you've got your pre-approval letter. It's gotta be dated within 30 days, signed by the lender and including all their contact information. It states a credit check's been run and that the buyer and what amount the buyer is approved for. They will send it back if it's not, it doesn't have those things. Um, next, the buyer needs to pick a title company. So it's always buyer's choice. I do recommend um, Caliber or Knight and Berry just because they have a lot of experience in this area. Uh, really, really important with HUD or any REO to use a title company that has a lot of experience with it. If they don't do things correctly on their end, um, the, it, things could not, you know, the deal could get canceled. They could not close properly. So you're going to want to use somebody who know, knows how to handle this. You're also going to need some info from them. So when you go to do your checklist, you're going to need to put in who's, who the title company is and their contact information. So now you've got your earnest money, copy of your earnest money check. You've got your uh, title company picked out and you've got your pre-approval letter. You get those things. Um, there's a link that says checklist in that email that, that HUD sent you. So you upload those, fill in any missing information that you didn't priorly put in with the bid um, about your buyers, their email, maybe their social, that kind of thing. Um, and then it, HUD controls the signature process. So they're going to review everything you uploaded, make sure they have what they need, and then they're going to start that process. Um, so they will send it to the broker, the buyer's title, and then I'll go back to them to sign. Um, once that happens, you're going to get another email saying it's ratified. Here's your ratified contract. And then your timelines start. Buyer's agents um, will need to request to turn on utilities for inspections. Their utilities are rarely ever turned on. Um, they will email you how to do this. The listing agent for HUD has no control over utilities. So you need to follow the instructions that HUD gives you. They have uh, a preservation company that will uh, turn them on for a set period of time and then turn them back off. Um, I really be careful with that. You know, if there's, with turning on water, if they allow it, Sometimes they won't even allow it um, because with any REO, your buyer is saying that they're gonna be responsible if something happens while those utilities are turned on. So just be careful of that. Um, they also, they, they encourage you to do an inspection in 14 days, um, but they, they won't refund your earnest money or they won't fix anything 
Owner occupants for certain items, it's very structural issues. Um, I've only ever had one time where they refunded earnest money to an older owner occupant, um, and that was a foundation shift. Otherwise, they um, they won't return their earnest money, even if your buyers change their mind. So keep that in the back of your head when your, your buyer is viewing the home. This is as is. No repairs are going to be done. It's very unlikely, no matter what they find in that inspection, that money will come back to them. Investors, it never will. Um, if it gets to the point where it's open to investors, they win the bid. They're, you know, they're free to do an inspection as well, but HUD will never refund an investor's um, earnest money. Um, and we already talked about this a little bit. If you see failed pressure test on that report, um, they're not going to allow you to turn the water on. So you're, you know, that's a good indication there's broken pipes. Some, um, just a tip, if, you're, if they're working with a lender that requires is some um, inspection or the appraiser requires something, some lenders will say, okay, you can, you can have a plumber do a pressure test and they will take his pressure test report. Um, that's one way to get around actually turning the water on. Okay, closings. HUD always encourages early closings. Um, they, you know, if everybody's ready and they'll say, great, have the title company submit the closing docs and we'll approve them and we'll close early. Um, so if you're as a buyer's agent, you're gonna wanna make sure that you let the listing agent know the day and the time of the closing. Um, nobody tells the listing agents when this is happening usually. So that's really important and you're, you're on that side that you tell them um, so that they can open up that house. Buyers will not get keys at closing. Keys on foreclosures uh, are numbered in, in a rotation on other homes. So listing agents are not allowed to give them out. So the buyer's agents let your buyers know in advance, hey, we're gonna need to change the locks right away, that you're not getting keys. So you know the listing agent will make sure the home's unlocked in, the, in time for the year closing. I was talking pretty fast there. Um, so if you have any questions, this one's a pretty pretty small one. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email or we can handle some now. I've got a couple, Amy. And then of course, if anybody else does, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, so one of my questions is, you talked about the fact that, you know, the, per, the people buying it must occupy it, right? Unless it opens up for investors. Yes. So is there an amount of time that they have to occupy it? So can they occupy it for 18 months and then sell it? Um, it I believe it's two years. Okay. And that's something that read when they'll make you sign an owner occupancy. Mm -hmm. so it'll, it should say in there, um, in case that ever gets changed, you know, just read that I'm print, but I, it used to be two years. Okay. Okay. Um, my next one is, is there any ideal financing? Like do the, does HUD look at it and, you know, whether if, you know, FHA may not pass, like, is there an ideal financing for the buyer that would help them potentially win the bid? Um, I don't think when they look at bids, they're not necessarily <clears throat> look, giving a preference to financing, but WIDA will never go through on these homes. Um, right. <clears throat> FHA, VA, much, much harder to get through. A rare occasion that it, the home might pass, um, obviously, but conventional and cash are, are going to work best, be the easiest for your buyers to get that con contract to go through. Okay. Um, and then I had one other question. This may be a Matt question to our broker who's on here. So you mentioned that they have their own contract, right? So Matt, do we, do our agents also have to fill out our contract or does the one that we normally use or does this suffice for no. what we need? No, That's um, the only thing you would have is if you have any, um, for, like your buyer's agency, any of the any required brokerage forms to get through compliance, those you would still do with your buyer, um, but you don't. Right of Wisconsin offer it all on these. Matt, any? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. I just wanted to make sure our agents knew what else they needed to do for us. 
Um, any, those were my questions. I was going to ask about as is, but you already addressed that. I want to make sure people know that these are, you know, that you're educating your buyer that these are as is properties, right? They're not yeah. going to fix stuff, really. you know. Yeah, really big deal that your buyers understand that because there's no negotiating after the fact. And when I was an agent, I had the only one I did and my buyer was a new buyer, you know, a first time home buyer and you know, we talked about it, but I didn't stress it enough, you know, so he, it, the inspection ended up scaring him a little. So I just wanted to stress that with people that. Yeah. And make sure that they're being honest with the lender um, to be and that have that pre-approval letter because it can, the whole thing can fall apart on them. And I would hate to see them lose earnest money just because they were, weren't honest and then they can't get lending. Right. Right. Um, other questions, anyone? Back to your comment, Beth, this is Peggy, um, So the, and to Matt, actually. So again, the HUD contract, does the HUD contract take the place of our offer to purchase document then? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Anybody else? One other question. So if you're not using the offer to purchase and you ultimately use their documents for the contract, when you're negotiating, are you doing it by email or? No, you, you can't really negotiate with HUD. Everything is just whatever it is. So tell your buyers to put in their, their best offer bid right up front. Um, you know, never go beyond what they're comfortable with, obviously, but tell them to give you their best bid. So you would you just go on the HUD home store site and you enter, enter the bid onto the property. Okay. You're not going to hear anything back. You want to make sure that you get a confirmation number. You're going to hit confirm twice, I believe, and then they give you a confirmation number. So if you're the first, you bid on the first day because your buyers have been stuck in that house for whatever, <laughs> and um, you might not hear anything till the end of the 10 days or 15 days. Um, so you know if they took a different offer, um, but you you get a, if you get a confirmation number, you know your bid is in. But there's no negotiating. It's you know it is what it is. If it's your bid's over fifty thousand, your earnest money is going to be a thousand dollars. If you're doing financing, your closing is forty five days, and then whatever your bid you put in, that's it. Yeah. So I that's a really good question, Lori, and thank you, Amy. So they're not going to counter as much like the bids are the bids. So Amy, when they close it, you're going to either just get a yes or a no, right? Like it's done. Right. The only time HUD will ever counter back is if they're getting really, really low bids and they need, they want to see if anybody will bring their prices up. Um, you know, then they'll, they'll send email to everybody asking for a, a, a higher bid. Now, Amy, that also goes back. So, you know, when you, when you sign a regular offer to purchase, right, obviously that buyer is not going to look it up. So when somebody submits a bid for their buyer on the HUD to home, if their buyer goes and looks at something else, can they cancel that before that 14 day and not have to be still yep. in there in case they find something four days later, they just want to purchase and don't want to deal with this process? Yep. They, you can go in as an agent and you can withdraw your bid. Okay. I just wanted to double check. I wanted to make sure they knew that too, that within that grace period, you know, you just yep. go in and cancel it, withdraw it, I guess. All right. Um, any other questions, guys? You also mentioned that there, um, with the water issue, that there was a potential workaround. Yep. If the if the lender is absolutely wants some sort of wants the appraiser to to do something, ask they if they can get a plumber in to do a pressure test. If you know, if the pipes won't, they can't turn it on. A lot of lenders will say, okay, I'll, I'll take a pressure test inspection um, from a certified plumber in lieu, of, in lieu of getting the water turned on. There's a few banks that won't. Um, I think I've run into Wells Fargo, doesn't want to do that. Their underwriters won't allow it. Um, so just kind of be careful. That's, you know, where the buyers just need, really need to stress to their lender that they're looking at a foreclosed home is a program they, they're quoting them for and giving them pre-approval for going to work. Thanks. 
Anybody else? Alrighty, well, we recorded this, so I'll post it. And obviously, um, you know, Amy is, if you guys are working on a HUD home and there's anything. Oh, oh, sorry. Definitely shoot me an email. Um, I've got some screen prints of if you get stuck on the HUD home store sites, like um, they've got great screen prints to show, like, what do I hit? What do I do? I'm, you know, I'm confused. So that it, it walks you right through it. Awesome. All righty. Thank you, Amy. We appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thanks.